Now, we see foreigners here, but I haven't met any Americans yet. I don't know. They may be here, but we never see any. Lots of Germans, though, and some talk and some don't. Uh, we saw a wonderful program. Last night, we went to see Sunda Appa Sunda dance. And these dancers were with the Gangolin music, and there's 30 men sitting around on the floor, and all this, they're all dressed alike in their beautiful outfits, and and they're, uh, they got, it looks like a xylophone on in front of them, and then they got what it looks like tack hammers. This is what it looks like. What it is is something else. And they're hitting those notes, boom, 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 on and on and on, and, and then reaching crescendos, you know, it's going so loud and so fast, and then coming down to bling, bling, bling. Meanwhile, there's the first thing that come out was three young girls, uh, nine, ten years old, twelve years old at the most, and they were dancing, and they dance with funny, jerky movements, and their hands are going into all different directions, and they're dancing the story, you know, and then later on, it's the, the barong comes out, this giant, looks like a giant dog with two people in it, you know, and everything, they, everything is just coordinated with the dance and the music. Nobody talks. You have a program, you know what's happening. You know that there's the princess there with her nymph ladies, and you know that there's this, the pirates are coming and trying, and the giants and all that stuff. So anyway, it took an hour and a half and it seemed like 10 minutes. It's just, it was great. I never saw that before, and it was wonderful. Earlier, we went and we saw the mask. There, and most of them wear masks on their face. And we saw the mask that they use in these dances, and they're carved. And we talked to the master carver, and he, he showed us all his masks and his kids, not his kids, usually their relatives. They were all there carving away. And they, after the mask is carved, they have to find the right piece of wood. They have to decide on the expression, what they want to have this mask say. And they, then they carve it. And then they put 40 coats of paint on it. 40 coats of paint. Now that's a lot. So it was very interesting to see. And they took us to upstairs and showed carvings that was things that they did. One, the top four was like a museum. They didn't sell any of those. The other four is they, if you wanted to buy an elephant for $2,000, fine, we'll sell it. You know, they were masters. Anyway, the local food here is wonderful. I'm eating pasta, pastas with lots of garlic. Now, I'm not eating the rice and vegetables that I've been eating since we got here. We had that rice and vegetables in... Uh, in uh, Iranjaya, New Guinea, we had it in Borneo, and we had it in Sulawesi. But now that we come to Bali, it's different. They have the different uh, the pasta, spaghetti, but it's made like ours, but not like ours, because of course the sauce is totally different. Anyway, it's wonderful. And our hostess at this little hotel we're at is uh, Nioman. That's her first name, Nioman, and her last name is Puriani, and she is so wonderful. I, I just, the sweetest little thing, it's so beautiful, so delicate, and she runs this place with her father-in-law because her husband is mostly working close by, but working, but now he's coming back. They've got 11 rooms, and they're going to make it larger. They're going to make more rooms there. It, it was just a grand place to stay. So after our couple of days there, we left, oh dear boo-hoo, we left Purisari Resort in Ubud, Bali. And we drove to Puri Lumbung in Mundak, Bali. Uh, uh, Puri means palace, and Lumbung means of the rice barn. Now, we have uh, three boys, they're gu our guides and our helpers, and, and there's uh, Wyan, Wyan, and Good Day. And I'll tell you more about them uh, and their strange names. 